couple screws up here at the top of the heater. This is an Atwood, and I believe the model is uh, 8535 but I'm going to find that out for sure when I open it up here and look at the label. A couple screws here, fairly straightforward on this part. Door flips down, and then this flips down. I'm going to take off this uh, exhaust vent. It just has a wing nut here, and you just need to loosen it, and then this exhaust vent should pull out. And that way I can get to uh, this side of the fan. This, uh, this has four screws. If you can get to them. And the tricky part here is if you're not using the socket driver is just to uh, <laughs> make sure you don't lose these screws. And to three here's four four screws there off to the left side here you want to unplug the power that goes to the, or the uh, plug that goes to the circuit board and this red wire here goes to the igniter and then uh, I know you can't see it but up in here is another wing nut you can just take this off by hand. If you ever have to replace the control board, this is how you do it. Those two, the plug and the igniter cord, and then this board pops right out. This is the circuit board inside this plastic, if you have to replace that. That allows you to access the left side of the blower fan. So inside this lid, and this is really dirty, I need to clean this up. This little switch here is called the sail switch. I'm moving that with my thumb. So when the blower turns on, it blows this switch down, which actually tells the uh, circuit board that it the fan is turning and it's okay to light, light the burner. So I need to clean all this dust out of here on this sail switch. And maybe test that for ohms but I think it's good so anyway and then here's a circuit breaker right here on the on the fan to the main power so I just need to hold this out of the way and see what's see what's going on with this guys this fan this fan is loose the motor is inside the fan right there I don't know if you can see it but in there I don't have very good lighting here so I need to get that motor out of there so the first thing I need to do Spin this fan around, and I can reach a wrench through, or a, an Allen wrench through that hole, and loosen a, a, a grub screw that's on that fan. And I have to do the same thing on the other side. There's a there's a fan right there, and it's got the same deal. Through this hole right here, I reach a wrench through there and undo a grub screw. So that's what I'm going to do next. Well, that feels like that's in there. Let's try the wrench again on this one. There we go. Whew, I'm starting to sweat that a little bit. All right, let's see. I don't want to pull this all the way out. Just loosen up the fan so that I can slide it off of the shaft. That was one eighth Allen head wrench. Let's try this one in the slot provided. And I need the wrench on that too. There we go. All right. Loosen that. And then I should, with some persuasion, be able to pull that fan off of there. There we go. There's the fan. And it's dirty. It could use a cleaning. But that's what the blower fan looks like. Set that to the side. And here's the motor. And it looks pretty nasty. I'm pretty sure that the bushings or bearings are shot on it. So the next thing I need to do is unplug these two wires. So I've got uh, 
positive and negative so the red one on the bottom you guys don't forget that so uh, you can tell me that when I put this back together red on the bottom yellow on the top and then up here right there where my fingers are pointing is a screw that kind of pinches this cage down around the motor so I need to loosen that and then hopefully wiggle the heck out of that motor and pull it out of there so that's what I'm gonna do next that just has a flathead screw on it I don't think I need to pull it all the way out now that motor is definitely shot so let's loosen this screw this is just like a like a big clamp basically Try that down a little bit so I got some room to uh, pull that electrical part out matter of fact I'm gonna pull that screw all the way out don't lose it and set it aside and then pull this clamp down out of the way the hard part is getting it over this little electrical plug-in spot here screwdriver I've got that pulled down out of the way I can I'm gonna go get a rag and then get a grip on that motor and wiggle it and see if I can pull it out of this other side of the fan here hold t-shirt and grab a hold of that bad boy and it's coming out nice was still connected to the fan on this other side that's gonna be the hard part to bust that loose Let's see, what do I... Well, let me monkey around with that. If I get that shaft loose out of that other side of the fan, it'll come right out of there. So I'm gonna mess around with that and then I'll get right back to you. Actually, it wasn't too bad once I figured it out. The center hub of that fan right there, I don't know if you can see that black mark on it. What I had to do was hold a match in there, a wooden match, stick match, on this hub. 30 seconds to a minute. I just held the match as long as I could before it burnt my fingers to heat up the outside of part of that hub and then I took on this side a screwdriver right in here between the motor and this plate and pried and boom it popped right out. So here's the motor and the shaft. You see the play in that shaft thing is trashed looks like I got a model number or something here on it I will take that model number search it out and find a new part it took me uh, oh, 30 minutes most of that time was spent trying to figure out how to pull that motor out of the center of that exhaust fan over here on the right hand side but so you got the cooling fan that big fan cage that I showed you that's the blower that blows the warm air throughout the camper. This side is the exhaust fan and they're riding on the same shaft the motor sits in between but this exhaust fan blows the blows the exhaust out the out the exhaust pipe. Exhaust tube. It's pretty clean you don't want any cobwebs or debris and stuff in there it'll kind of prevent it from burning properly or exhausting properly. I'll get that all cleaned up just got my new replacement motor in for the uh, camper heater up on the on the property so that of course the new one is on the left looks like it's gonna work it's an aftermarket cheaper motor It should have been pretty straightforward, but I left the house without a probably the most specialized tool I need, which is which is uh, that one eighth um, inch Allen head. 
So what I did was I bought one of these on the way up here. I was already 15, 20 miles from the house. I should have turned around, I guess, but went and bought one of these to connect to the uh, end of my wrench and get in there. So what I had to do was drill this hole out. That was about a uh, 3 16 inch hole, I, I would guess. Bored it out to about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit larger. So that I could get my wrench through here to get to that Allen screw back there. And I don't know if you can see it. Maybe there you can see it. So that was un, unplanned. Had I not forgot that tool, it would have been a lot easier. But I did get it, and I got that Allen uh, head tightened up. So what you want to do is get this motor adjusted in there and get the fan adjusted so that you can spin that thing and it's not hitting anything. Sliding it back and forth on that motor shaft until it has all the clearance around all the way around and it sounds smooth and sounds clear and then on this side you see this it's like a foam gasket between the motor and this plate here that's got to be a seal in order to keep uh, gases from this side entering the the uh, heater blower and blowing that into your camphor so I pushed that motor up tight remember I got the motor this one was just the one they sent me had the uh, leads on it versus the just the plug but this will be okay so I just put that the same place that the other one was that square right there is where the little box for the other motor came through where those plug-ins go but this will be fine. I got it in there. I got it tight. So now I need to connect the, the blower fan on this side and then finish putting it back together. So I'll show you that as I get a little bit farther along here. All right, I got the fan on this side and then I got my motor wired in. So just to protect those, I pushed those connectors together and then threw some electrical tape over them so they don't get short out on anything and all I need to do is put this plastic door back on there and we'll see if it'll fire up but here's what it sounds like now nice and smooth got all the dirt and everything cleared out of here and neither fan this side or the exhaust sides hitting anything Turning real nice. I got my exhaust pipe put back on there, tightened down, and clean the inside of this tray where the cell switch is so it moves nice and smooth. So I'll come back as soon as I get this back on and we'll see what happens. Alright, guys, here it is. Got it running. It sounds pretty smooth. I don't have the gas turned on yet, but uh, I just got the fan running. And I'm getting a bit exhaust. And I'm getting uh, airflow inside pretty nice. And the best thing of all, it sounds nice and smooth. So, I'm just going to turn the wires. Pin that door back up when I close this main door. And then I brought some new weather stripping to replace this piece of leather strip that's kind of tore up so I'm going to uh, get that fixed, get this door screwed back down and then uh, turn the gas on we'll see what happens. I'll come back and let you know. Alright there we go, job done. Hear the flame in there, the thing's cranking fan sounds good so job complete